we're going up here for a, a tour of the Oxygen House. Eric hasn't seen it. He, he doesn't look too thrilled, but I'm sure once he gets inside, he will. May through October, it's open. So we got plenty of time. It's very humid. It's uh, 12 o'clock noon, and I bet you it's going to rain again. So anyway, we'll go up there. First kindergarten in the United States. All right. We're ready. Come right in. You just join the others in the room there. And as you go in, let me ring the front doorbell for you. Okay. for you, mainly because it's a very unusual bell. The ringing part is in the center of the house because that is a natural echo chamber. So each time the bell here is rung, it can be heard perfectly in all 57 areas of the house. children all were, are in the same shape. All are triangular, all have at least one closet and one walk-through window. This room is where he passed away at the age of 20 in his friends. Front door is for company, back door was used by the mill workers. The door here with the magazine rack attached to it that leads to a club. This room here, or this area I should say, is the conservatory. And you always kept a wide variety of green and flowering plants in there. Oh, oh boy. And you are looking 40 feet up here into what is known as the tower room or cupola. The only reason for that little room's existence was to provide much needed light and air for the lower hallway. In addition, it is a continuation of the chimney wall. Because the bed there is quite like the one you will see in the Lincoln Room at the White House. Like all beds in the Octagon House, it is a feather bed. And this bed dates to 1860 and was made in St. Louis, Missouri, 1841. Known as a used as a nursery from about 1860 to 1870. Cleaning was too good for the guests who stayed with them. As a result, they always had a guest staying with them. Mm. Now behind you there, near the baseboard, is a round opening in the corner. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And that is one of the original air conditioning vents. That's how they all appeared here in the house. You may open the closet door if you wish to see how big the closet space was in the Octagon House. A typical closet, triangular, of course. Not terribly deep, but very, very tall, because you could have hooks attached to the ceiling to allow for ladies' dresses to hang down and not be destroyed. The water Again, the originally the chimes were humidified in the winter. You could put rose water in there to perfume the room in the summer, and of course, I suppose, incense if you wish, and also you could put camphorated oil in there to act it as a vaporizer. We also have the only chamber pot in the house with a silencer in this room. And you may laugh and scoff now, but you didn't want to have any more undue attention pay drawn to this than you already had. So this one has a crocheted husher or muffler. So that when you answer the call of nature, you know what I mean, and we're about to hang up the receiver, you know what I mean, instead of hearing it go clink, clank, or clunk, and this room it went like this. And by Ned, you can't ask for anything more than that, no, can you? But it's really not the furnishings and things like that that makes this a very unique and special spot in the house. That honor belongs to this. You see, this is the only room in the house with a sink, and the only sink in the house. An unusual idea to put it in a guest room. You would have put it in a family room, I would think, more, more over than a guest room. But this, again, shows how much they thought of the guests who stayed with them. How's the water to be drained into a bucket? And the bucket would then be dumped into the slop jar and then taken down the old-fashioned method. But it was quite nice, and as a guest, it meant you could sleep late in the morning knowing your water was ready for you. Sleep late. It's well, say about a quarter after five or five thirty. Late, huh? Oh yes. Well, this was a farm. <laughs> 105 choice acres of farm. <laughs> Any and questions about the beds are beginning to be popular bedroom furnishings. Though not the original bed here. The original bed would have been again a hardwood bed, much like the ones you've seen up to this point. Another child's bedroom is to be seen there. Straight into and the, this room. the workman can go to the right and there's another flight of stairs. 
So please take a look around the room, and if you have any questions, please. He's not a very well-liked man in Watertown. In this case, you will find display of German culture from our Turner Verein of German Gymnastic Organization, friendship books, the German press, and literature. Here you will find the brewing industry, at one time an important industry in Watertown, and German singing societies and musical instruments. About 90% of Watertown citizens today trace their ancestry back to Germany. Originally, this room would have been used as a common gathering spot for the mill hands, uh, and their bedrooms would be the next place in Germany. Germany. Here you can get your, tin, your, your teeth pulled, your chin scraped, and bled all for a nickel. The first barber and dentist in, well, I should see, yeah, I guess the first dentist in town as well. Very colorful person. The Werner family married into the Bersinger family, who were prominent brewers in Watertown as well. I've been trying to find a picture of Joseph Bersinger and his uh, daughter married into the Werner family. Now let's see, Dr. Werner's son is pictured right down there. So that's very interesting to know. Wow, good. Yeah, they, uh, their homestead was on 5th Street, where the church used to be, 5th and Main. There used to be a church oh, on the corner, they tore yes, it down. Yes, Moravian Church. Yeah, and their house. Not Moravian, Methodist rather. Yeah. Ah, yes. And a white house right next to it. The whole block, I think, was tore out, except for the uh, yeah. hotel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, of course, there's a bank there. And mm -hmm. Well, the shoe is there yet, of course. Yeah. yeah. You can't get rid of shoe. No. <laughs> oh, yes. All that was taken. Mm -hmm. You know your uh, history really well. You're a fabulous tour guide. Well, I mean, thank you very much. Of information. I'm the historian up here, so I guess I know a little bit about Well, as I say, people, tell people, I know a little bit about a lot and a lot about a little. That's what I'm <laughs> The Bersinger Brewery was, was this brewery originally. It was later became Harding's and was torn down in 1953 to make way for a supermarket, which is still on that site today. Now this is the kitchen of the occupant house. I don't know if you noticed the temperature drop or not, but it's usually quite cool down here because you see we're level with the ground on the far side of the house, thus making it a cool room year round. It is also a large working space and quite well lit because of the window placements. You're also near the fresh water source, which is the well you see outside there. The dumb waiter comes down on the far left of this side chamber called the light pantry. You should be able to see a little here. My aim is not to drown you in the waters of times past, but rather to squirt you a little drop of salt. And I hope I give you a good and thorough dousing. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who have not seen the buildings on the grounds, there are still two other buildings to be seen. The first kindergarten in America, the white building, and our barn, both self-guiding buildings. Now, if this was the Wisconsin Dells or some like organization, at this point I would stop the van and I'd be selling you postcards and magazines. But by a strange quirk of fate, called Knack of God, if you will, the back door of the Octagon House opened smack dead down to the front door of the gift shop. Amazing. So I'll take it as a matter of course that you'll all be spending at least two to three thousand dollars a piece there, so we'll say nothing more about it. Except to I hope that you have a very pleasant afternoon, keep dry, keep cool, and have a safe and pleasant journey wherever it is you're bound for. Do watch your step now, please, and I'll let you off the back door. Be prepared for the heat to rise up now and give you a good lathering right in the face. Okay. Oof. Oh, yeah. By the way. Here is a tip for people who are who wish to have an ant-free house. You always plant this by the back door. Always. This is tansy. Oh. It has a bitter sap or what have you in it that keeps ants from coming in the back door. Oh.